Hey everybody, Michael, VY2MJ here, and today we're looking at a radio I acquired just three days ago, the Yaesu FTM 500D. And what I'm going to go through on this video as quickly as possible is the basic operation, things that I found. Uh, there seems to be nothing but positives, very few negatives, and we're going to start by indicating that in order to go to your function menu, which includes about 127 different options, the first thing you want to do is check your software version. As of this video, the software version is what you see on the screen there. The version that came with the radio, even though I've only had it for three days, was an obsolete version that did have some bugs and a lack of some functionality. Check out the Yesu website in your country or continent to download the most recent version of the software. So one of the things I've just demonstrated is the menu system, which we'll get back to in a second. So the radio is a dual band receiver. On the top, there's an SDX button, which is basically a preamp. I've never had to use that. Probably will never use it. The double arrow button will allow you to switch from one to the other. So you've got the basically just swapping the top and the bottom around. If you press that and hold it, it will copy the top to the bottom, I believe. Pressing the DISP button will show you the activity around that frequency, in this case, simplex 52 frequency. And then by pushing on whatever activity you think is there, will bring up that frequency. What we're basically saying there is just nothing but noise because we're in a high RF environment here. The on button you either hold for a few seconds to turn it off or on, but you can also lock it and it indicates it'll lock in the top left hand corner as you can see. Unlocking it, pressing the back button, or actually should press the display button. We are going to touch this knob here. This is the volume. You press it and there's your squelch. Okay, so you press that again, same with the bottom. Squelch, volume, we're in digital, so squelch doesn't really work. If we hold and press the left top button, it brings us to the super duper audio equalizer, which you can change through the function button, clicking on it once, and you can change all this stuff here. I haven't played with that yet, so we're going to leave that loan. We'll hit the back button on the bottom right hand corner of the knob. One thing you will notice on this radio is a lack of buttons in comparison to some older relics that I have. So what they've done is they've allowed you to create this screen here or change this screen here with the exception of the two top buttons. So you can customize the bottom eight. In this case we've got a scan button uh, squelch, DTMF, a bunch of this stuff which I'll probably end up changing. Scan TX power is helpful. TX power is also assigned to the memories as well. Speaking of memories, if we touch the top right hand button, this goes between your VFO and your memory, but you can also, if you look at the top left where it says M all in green, you can change the band too. So if we just want air, we can just have air, which it makes a great receiver for, VHF, UHF, and all. There's also other, which steps outside some odd frequencies above and below the hand bands, which I have turned off, because I'm not going to listen to anything in the 400s or the 900s, typically. Now, as far as other buttons, MW obviously writes the, if you're in a VFO, MW, you would hold it down, you would select a blank space, hold it down again, and it would write that frequency into that memory. You've got a thousand of them, so you're not going to run out. Also, PMG, which is pretty cool, I like this. You press the PMG button, and there's five frequencies, and if you add a sixth, it will delete one of them, or if you select them, you can also press the back button and hold it, and it will delete it as well. When you see this particular frequency, and you see the VE1CRA Fusion, you actually enter that in when you program the memory. So we go out of PMG, we're going to go into our memories by holding the VM button down. So if we go to 
say a ham frequency here, click on it, edit, and then we've got receive the TX, which you're probably not going to change because you're just going to assign an offset. The tag, which is really the text, I don't know why they call it tag, is there. So you can enter that in and whether or not you want to scan it. So if we get out of here, if we go to our soft screen here and hit scan, well, it's scanning the VFO, we don't want that. We're going to go back into memories. We've selected all. We could just select air. And whatever band you want to scan, we're going to scan them all. Is you hit your function button, scan. There, now it's scanning all the memories. If we stop that, and then do with a click of a microphone, and we select band air, and then we go to function scan, it doesn't want to do it. Interesting. Let's try that again. No, it doesn't want to scan it, even though there's two air frequencies in there. Interesting. What about VHF? It will scan VHF only. Stopping the scan. What about UHF? Yeah, it will scan just UHF. Go back to all. And they're scanning all. Stop that. We can go over to PMG, and that would mod. Michael, one three five at update five. That. Bear, Charlotte Town altimeter three zero one. That would be air traffic control, which I've got two different air stations programmed in here. Obviously, you can't transmit on that. Now the menu system, or the or the well, let's talk memories. So to go into memories, hit this button here. There's your memories. So I've entered in about 20, 25 of them. I would strongly suggest that rather than doing this on the radio, you download the software, which is only, I think, about $25 US from RT Systems. Or I believe Yesu, if you check out their website, not only are there, is there five user manuals for this, five of them in PDF format, but you've got your firmware updates and you also have the ability to download software to program in the memories so it's not such an arduous journey because I wanted everything with text. As you can see, we can go in this. All this information can be entered in on your keyboard and then you can use an SD card to upload and download it in this case, I've used the serial cable you can get from Yesu or RT Systems and other sources that allow you to communicate with a computer. Challenge there is you do need to load up the serial USB driver, which is on the Yesu website first. And the other thing I had to do, because it wasn't working, is I had to go into the software and tell it was on tell it, it was on COM port three, which I discovered by going into Windows device manager. I can't speak on behalf of what you're going to have to do with the Mac. So once I had the COM port set up properly, it seemed to work. And then what I could do is I could go into the menu system here by holding down the function button. And then we could go into clone and you can send the data to and from, I suppose, this is meant to set it to and from another radio, but in this case, you're uploading and downloading from the radio. Now, the menu system, as you see, if you press function once, that brings you to your quick buttons, which would normally be hardware buttons on the device, but in this case, they're configurable. If you hold and press, hold and press the button down, it brings up the whole menu. The menu is 127 items. All these features are within the first 15 pages of the general or the operation manual. There's two operation manuals. One's about 15 pages, one's about 85. But within the first few pages, you'll get a list of these. And then further into the manual, you'll get a list, but you also get whatever options pertain to that particular function, like LCD brightness, for instance. So when you go up and down these menus, the top button just moves by one. The bottom menu moves by the subtopic. So in this case, you've got the display, transmit, receive, memories, K 
configuration. One thing you may want to do, which I showed in another one of my videos, is turn off the beep for digital because it will drive you crazy and it beeps even when the radio is muted or the volume is turned down. I don't know if that's fixed in the recent firmware upgrade. The digital modes, we've got um, GM. So GM is something you'll probably never use, but it's a system where you can actually have a bunch of people on a list and just signal them individually or as a group. Wires X, which is uh, Yesu's digital mode. I'm using an open spot for Pro for digital. I haven't played with Wires X yet as far as the cable and the computer and so forth. Data APRS is all built in. There's a GPS built in as well. When you go to this screen here, you'll see a little GPS or satellite in the top left-hand corner indicating you have satellite. I don't because I'm in a basement. So you've got APRS. Um, SD card. So one of the things I've been doing is backing things up and reading from the card. Seems to work a little more reliable than using the serial cable, which has failed on me numerous times for whatever reason. Uh, options, Bluetooth, you can use the ASU Bluetooth headset, which isn't that expensive, or it will support third-party headsets as well, not guaranteeing the quality of the voice, obviously. Cloning we covered, reset where you set your call sign, put that in here. Uh, APRS, uh, call sign is back in APRS. And when you upgrade your firmware, you should make a backup first because what they tell you to do is after your firmware is upgraded, you do a factory reset, which obviously erases everything. And then you're going to have to bring your data in through either that serial cable or I would probably prefer that SD card uh, as, a, as a backup or a primary means as well. Exiting out. Um, you have a sub-dial here on the right-hand side to change frequencies. Uh, band we've covered. If you want to change, hit to hold down this button, we'll take the current memory and put it into the VFO. Other than that, that's it in a nutshell. The head comes off the main unit. The SD card is over here. You receive this microphone here, which was probably all blurry. So that comes, it has four programmable keys on the bottom, which you can set up. And it has one output for VHF, UHF, so presumably it has a built-in duplexer. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this radio, please put them in the comments below. Give the video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll make some more videos. Have a great day.